Chapter 7, Learning My Lesson When people are mad at you, they do a lot of pointing. In the office, Mrs. Brattle pointed to a chair. She said, wait here, no smiles. Then she went into the principal's office. A minute later, she came out and so did Mrs. Corp. Mrs. Corp pointed to her office and said, in there, Jake. I had never been to the principal's office before. There was a big gray desk. There was a row of big gray bookcases and there was a big gray principal. Mrs. Corp had gray shoes, a gray dress, and gray hair, and she was taller than Mrs. Brattle, even taller than my dad. She pointed at a gray chair in front of her desk. Sit there, Jake. So I sat down. Then she said, You know, it's against the rules to hit someone, don't you? It wasn't a question. And I said, Yes, I know. Then why did you hit Link Baxter? This was the tricky part. If I told about Link being a bully, then I would be a tattletale. But if I didn't say something, then she would think I was some crazy heater. So I pointed at the spot on my pants and I said, Some water got on my pants in the boys' room and I thought Link was making fun. So simple, so true, so easy for Mrs. Carp to understand. And she did. Just like that, she got a friendly look on her face and said, I understand about feeling embarrassed, Jake, but do you see that hitting is wrong no matter what? And I said, yes, because it was true. I really was sorry I had hit Link. I did not want to have a fight with Link, ever, for two reasons. First, because it's not good to hit and kick and scratch and pull hair and roll around on the ground. And second, because I knew what would happen to me if I ever did get in a fight with Link. I would turn into one huge purple bruise. So Mrs. Corp sent me back to my classroom. She didn't even call my mom. As she opened the door to her office for me, she said, I'm sure you've learned your lesson, haven't you, Jake? And I said, yes, Mrs. Corp. Only I didn't know if we were talking about the same lesson. As I walked from the school office toward Mrs. Brattle's room, Link came out of the nurse's office. I think he had been waiting for me. He walked beside me. In the empty hallway, Link seemed bigger than ever. He gave me that bully smile and said, Nice move, Flake. Have a good time with the principal. This was the first time I had been alone with Link. I was scared, but I said, It wasn't so bad. We kept walking. Being alone with Link was different and I thought that maybe a bully stops being a bully if there aren't some other kids around to watch. I thought that maybe he's only a super bully when he has an audience. For a second, it felt like Link Baxter was just this big kid and I was walking down the hall with him. Back then, I didn't know as much about bullies as I do now, so I said, How come you peek on me? Wrong question. The super bully was back. Link looked at me like I was a bug. He said, damn question. And I thought maybe he was going to push me into a locker or something, but he didn't. And we just kept walking. But it was like my question confused him. And just before we got back to room 23, I knew. I knew why he didn't answer the question. He didn't because he couldn't. He couldn't tell me why because he didn't really know. But there had to be a reason why Link was a bully. And if I could figure out that reason, or if I could give him a reason not to be a bully, then Link Baxter, super bully, would become Link Baxter, ex-super bully.